once again. Thank you for the presentation. And now we have a last paper, which will be presented by Benjamin Ali. And it's about modeling the effect of the military oxygen marks on speech characteristics. So, good morning, everyone. I'm Benjamin Ali, and I'm going to present uh, our paper, which is entitled uh, Modeling the Effect of Military Oxygen Masks on Speech Characteristics. So this project belongs to um, now this study belongs to a project funded by the French National Defense Organization, and it aims at developing robust automatic speech recognition systems uh, for military aircraft pilots. And in this paper, we focused on the speech with uh, an oxygen mask because oxygen mask, uh, such as this one that wears. Um, uh, a pilot modifies the speech production at different levels, so there is the acoustic level due to the presence of the cavity downstream of the vocal tract. There are also um, some articulatory perturbations which modify the front positions or the front trajectories, and also it can induce some stress so that the pilot, uh, as a response, may modify his prosody, its uh, F0 control or its speech rhythm. And all of these um, modifications make the word error rate to double when we use recent uh, ASO systems trained on normal speech in comparison with uh, the word error rate that we obtain with normal speech. So in order to uh, reduce this uh, error rate, we should train our models with speech with uh, an oxygen mask, but it is very difficult to collect enough data or even impossible. Uh, because of different reasons, one reason being the confidential nature of military communications, for instance. So the solution that we propose is to uh, design uh, data augmentation techniques that are uh, dedicated to uh, this task. So first we have to model the effect of the oxygen mask on the produced speech and then uh, define some um, uh, transformator, uh, transformation operators then can uh, simulate speech with a mask. Uh, the, that is, we, we want to transform uh, normal speech so that the characteristics resemble the characteristics of speech with a mask. So this is the main uh, aim of uh, this paper. Um, curiously, there is not a lot of uh, scientific publications uh, about the effect of uh, the oxygen mask on speech. Uh, the main paper has been written by uh, Bond and published in, uh, in 89. In this paper, the author analyzed uh, some uh, prosodic and uh, romantic features of speech in um, bisyllabic uh, isolated English words. And the author made some experimental observation and the results show that there is, not, there, there is no significant prosodic effect, but the main effect is um, a compression of the F1, F2 vowel space toward a central vowel, as you can, as you can see on this uh, figure. Also, Voinovich observed uh, some uh, reduction of the acoustic energy for frequency uh, higher than uh, 1000 Hz, and Utunen uh, observed additional formants around 300 and 3500 Hz. More recently, Voinovich uh, used um, acoustic simulation to study the acoustic impact of uh, the presence of a closed chamber uh, downstream of the vocal tract. And um, the simulation show uh, a new resonance frequency around uh, 3000 Hertz, oh, sorry, uh, which may correspond to the additional uh, formant uh, found by, uh, I mean, uh, observed by Utenen. Um, and also it observed uh, an increase of the formant frequencies uh, by uh, five or by five percent. Um, when there is a closed chamber downstream of the vocal tract. But this uh, change of form and frequency cannot explain the variations that have been observed by Bond. So this suggests that uh, the main um, uh, modifications of the formants are due to art articulatory perturbations. So um, after this short state of the art, we still have to uh, model the uh, effect of the oxygen mass and to quantify uh, this effect in, in order to design our um, data augmentation techniques. So to do, to do that, we connect some uh, experiments uh, via two recording sessions with two kinds of masks uh, used by the French army. Uh, different speakers, 
uh, participate to, to these uh, recording sessions. Some have recorded for both sessions and in total we have 12 speakers. We used uh, for the corpus 50 French sentences phonetically balanced that have been chosen so that they are long enough uh, uh, to, uh, to have several vowels and then uh, study uh, the uh, variations of the from and trajectories and not too long enough to be uh, uh, turned in single breath and uh, without errors. And uh, then we analyze speech characteristics uh, by focusing on the from end trajectories at the utterance level. And we compute it for each from end, uh, so the first, the second, and the third, uh, two uh, features, which are the median value and the span, which quantifies the amplitude of variations of the trajectory around its mean contour. And then we normalize uh, the values um, by dividing the value obtained for the same sentence and the same speaker, but without uh, the mask. So that's when this index is greater than one, that means that the value has been increased in the presence of the oxygen mask. And conversely, when it is uh, lower than one, it means that it has been decreased. So here are the results for the mean from end frequency. So the first from end, the second, and the third, and also the different uh, speakers and conditions. So the uh, first letters correspond to the speaker ID, so for instance, speaker BE. Uh, the first digit corresponds to the type of mask, mask one or, or mask two, and then a male or female speaker. So results show uh, a high cross speaker variability. So for instance, uh, speakers FSA, FSB, and FSC tend to increase the value of the first moment with the oxygen mask, uh, while a speaker WB or JG tend to uh, decrease the value of the first moment. Um, across all speakers, there is no uh, clear tendency. And also uh, note that uh, for uh, some speakers, such as BE, as the type of mask has uh, an impact. So for the first mask, BE tend to increase the first moment and uh, while it decreases for uh, the second type of mask. For F2 and F3, we, the, uh, the, the speakers tend to decrease the formant values. Uh, and across all speakers, we have a decrease of about 5 uh, between 5 and 10%. Then for the performance span, uh, we have a significant impact on the, on the span of uh, the first moment, where almost all speakers tend to significantly decrease the value of the, uh, of the first moment span. And uh, overall, we have, uh, across all speakers, we have a decrease of about uh, 30%. Uh, this is interesting because the first moment is common, commonly related to the jaw and the lip articulators. So that suggests that um, the mask uh, perturbs these uh, articulators and uh, makes uh, the activity of the jaw and the lips uh, less than without the mask. So we get a, f a, a flatter uh, from trajectory for the first moment. There is no significant effect for uh, the second and the third moment span. And then we try to validate this uh, observation by uh, integrating, uh, in integrating this uh, observation into, our, uh, into a new uh, data augmentation technique and then conducting a preliminary RSR experiment with a small task specific system. So we used uh, training data made of two corpora in English, uh, corpus of uh, uh, ATC data and then uh, red speech using the official military air aircraft uh, phraseology. And then for test data, we used uh, a red speech with a mix of official phraseology and sentences inspired from real flight missions. So sen sentences were uh, uttered with, uh, with an oxygen mask. And then we used uh, ASA models from Vocapia using uh, HMM, TDNN, acoustic models, and a standard three-gram language model. So for the data augmentation techniques, we propose a novel approach based on uh, articulatory perturbations. And uh, for that, we used uh, our uh, training data. And for each utterance of the corpus, we first estimate the from one trajectories. Then we compute the median value and the span. And then we randomly generate modification factors following the probability density function built from our observation. Uh, so then we can um, 
modify both the median value and the span following these modification factors to get ta target trajectories. So modifying the uh, median value corresponds to a translation of the uh, uh, from one trajectory along the frequency axis and modifying the span uh, corresponds to either um, delight, uh, a dilatation or either a compression of the Schumann trajectory along the frequency axis. And then once we get our uh, traje target trajectories, we can modify uh, the speech by um, uh, modifying the spectral envelope of the analyzed frame so that the peaks of the spectral envelope match uh, the uh, target form and positions uh, using a piecewise linear frequency warping. Then once we get uh, our uh, augmented data, we can use them as uh, training data. So here are the performance uh, of our models. Uh, the, baseline, the baseline correspond to uh, uh, just the training data without augmentation. I also uh, I did um, uh, the VTLP method, which is a vocal track length perturb perturbation, which is a classic uh, data augmentation technique, which consists at uh, uh, artificially uh, modifying the length of the vocal tract, and it is used as a baseline for data augmentation technique. And then uh, our uh, data augmentation technique, articulatory perturbation, uh, with some of the uh, statistical distribution that, that we get from our experimental observation. And the result as presented as the mean award error rate. So with the baseline, we get a world error rate of 20, 22%. And um, you can see that all our, uh, the best performance are obtained for uh, our articulatory based augmentation techniques, which uh, improve the world error rate obtained from the baseline relatively by more than 14% uh, with a max at 17.3%. Uh, and also note that it, outs, it outperforms the VTLP uh, based augmentation technique, which improves the uh, baseline by 11.4%. Uh, uh, so this shows that using specifically designed augmentation techniques uh, enabled uh, the world error rate to be uh, uh, better improved. So as a conclusion, we saw that um, the mask has an effect on the uh, on the speech, uh, which are uh, which is characterized um, notably by the uh, front uh, trajectories, which are modified due probably uh, due to uh, articulatory perturbation, and um, the most significant impact is on the first common span, certainly due to the jaw and lip perturbations. So we saw also that uh, by integrating in, uh, this uh, modif this uh, observation into uh, our acoustic models, it is possible to improve uh, the recognition of speech with an oxygen mask. So these preliminary uh, uh, results are quite promising. So we sh would like to uh, carry on uh, these, uh, these studies. Um, for instance, by uh, taking into account other effects, such, such as the acoustic effects. So maybe using voice progression techniques. Also maybe by uh, taking into account the prosodic effect. And also note that um, articulatory perturbation technique may be used for other applications such as the lumbar speech, when we also have some uh, articulatory modification of speech, but here it's uh, hyper uh, articulation. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. So are there any questions? I wanted to ask, can you estimate what would be the difference if if, uh, if you compare it to a normal oxygen mask that the regular pilots wear in, the, in a commercial aircraft? Would there be a similar results or is it a completely different uh, you mean characteristic? Uh... Like w when you have in a commercial aircraft, like the air transport, uh, the pilots can have the oxygen mask if there is some oxygen deficiency or something like that. So if it has the similar effects as, as the, as the military know, because mask? We, we, we just use the uh, military uh, aircraft pilot, so we, don't, uh, we couldn't make some uh, experiments with other masks. Mm -hmm. Okay, would be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, so thank you very much thank for you. the presentation.